Andre, the term multiverse has become very common in cosmology over the past 10, 15 years, meaning that there are multiple universes within a larger context. Uh, many people are mystified by this, uh, uh, kind of asking, you know, are you, are you serious? <laughs> well, you know, we did not come to this concept uh, because we wanted. We came to it uh, by necessity. It all started when we started studying inflationary cosmology. Inflation was first proposed as a solution of uh, certain problems of the Big Bang story. And one of the problems was why our universe is so homogeneous, so uniform. Uniformity seemed to be natural because you look to the right, you look to the left, universe is everywhere the same. And it was also very, very homogeneous. Density in average, density of the universe to the right and to the left of you was almost exactly the same. So we did not have an explanation. We came with one and that was inflationary theory. And then we started studying inflationary theory more precisely. And what we have found that Yes, indeed, it explains why the universe looks the same in our part of the universe, in the part which we can see at the moment. But then the same theory predicted that the universe looks completely different at much greater scale. Mm. So we, <laughs> well, uh, get this simple explanation of uniformity, but we did not notice that we bought something else. And this something else was the theory which tells that at large distances the universe looks completely different. Uh, this is, well, by the way, shown here on this picture of the fractal universe. This was what we wanted to explain. We wanted to explain why our universe looks like a huge, uh, homogeneous, uniform balloon. And then when we start learning, it appeared that this is a balloon producing new balloons, producing new balloons, producing new balloons forever. So our universe, instead of being one balloon, becomes a fractal consisting of many different balloons with different properties. So you see, what I'm trying to say is that we were not trying to invent this picture. We were trying to explain uniformity. And the only explanation which we have right now is related to inflation. And the same explanation tells you that the universe is 100% non-uniform at much larger scale. Then there was something else. We were still thinking that our universe at least has the same laws of physics everywhere because people were telling us that the universe is given to you in one copy. <laughs> and you do not ask questions about laws of physics. This is the law of physics. Then uh, apparently the same uh, theories which, well, produce inflation, they sometimes have an option of having many different vacuum states. By vacuum state, well, analogy, you have this water which can be liquid or can be solid. It's the same fundamental law of physics or it's the same chemical composition, but it may be looking completely different. So what we have found that... It's a phase transition. Yeah, it is kind of. We can start with the universe looking everywhere the same, but then because of quantum fluctuations which appear during inflation, this universe gradually become divided into parts which completely different realizations of laws of physics. Mm. So for example, in one part of the universe, electron is light. In another part of the universe, electron is heavy. In another part of the universe, there are no electrons whatsoever. Mm. Some parts of the universe have space with three dimensions and one time. In some other parts of the universe, space have nine dimensions. Mm. So you may ask questions, why do we live in space of three dimensions? And maybe the answer is that because we cannot live in space with nine dimensions, but somebody else may. Okay? So this is a completely different picture of the universe. In this picture, it is shown by different colors of these different balloons. Different colors correspond to different realizations of laws of physics here. So again, we did not want to invent this picture, it just naturally happened. So each time you have a splitting off into a new universe, it looks, it looks random, with the kind of laws. It's like shuffling the decks of cards and who knows what you get in the next Yeah, these, these are transitions which are not quite predictable. 
it's quantum uh, theory which governs it. And quantum theory tells you that you may, by chance, jump to the right, okay. you may ch by chance jump to the left, and so you may produce a theory wh where you have one realization of laws of physics and another realization. If you have a theory which allows you only one vacuum state, then all of these would have one color. However, recently we learned that one of the most popular theories which we're using right now to describe nature, that is string theory, has about 10 to the degree 500 different vacuum states. A, a, a one with 500 zeros yeah. describes an, a number that we don't, we, ca we can't even put a name to that number. <laughs> give, give or take another 100 zeros. Yeah. We do not really know what is the number there. Yeah. It's just the simple estimates. They give the number as huge as this. And then we start thinking, so what does it mean? And it means that all kind of colors which are available <laughs> at computers are not enough to, well, to color all of these uh -huh. different properties of, of the universe. You have a universe which consists of vastly different types of uh, space. Uh, the universe with different dimensionality. The universe with different laws of interaction between particle physics. And in some of them we could live, in some of them we could not. Mm -hmm. So the fact that we live here is like a super selection rule. We are in the part of the universe where we can live, somebody else can live somewhere else. So, okay, so <laughs> that's fine with me. We actually played, uh, tried to make a computer simulation of the pictures like that. And one of these uh, uh, simulations shows you these uh, quantum fluctuations, which produce this huge jump. See here, I start with almost homogeneous surface. Mm -hmm. That is the homogeneous distribution of energy in inflationary universe. And suddenly, these mountains start growing. Oh, wow. And these mountains, in some places, they are low, slow, everything is fine. These are the places which describe our galaxies. Our galaxies, they have been created because of creation of these quantum fluctuations during inflation. Right, right. But then you can see also here very large peaks in the distribution of energy. And these are the places where quantum fluctuations are so large, that you jump so high, that you produce new universes uh -huh. there. Uh -huh. And then in some places, these universes, if these jumps are very powerful, they can bring you from one vacuum state to another. And this is shown in this particular picture, which I can illustrate by the movie, which I have shown Kandinsky universe. <laughs> I called it Kandinsky universe because what we see there resembles as the pictures of famous Russian after painter Kandinsky. Look, by tradition, I start with a red <laughs> vacuum. And then it starts changing its color because of quantum fluctuations. And each color corresponds to the uh, part of the universe having different laws of physics operating in them. There are different laws of physics operating in the green part of it, and different in red, and different in blue. Well, essentially, this is like one fundamental law of physics, but it just works differently in these different parts. You are living, we are living with you somewhere in this green part, and then it will take us enormously large, exponentially large time to travel towards this green part of the universe, and then even more time to travel to the red one. And each time when you come to the place where green is replaced by uh, blue or red, you will find a domain wall separating these two different parts of the universe. 